Dear most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you because you are such an awesome God. Um, we recognize who you are and in humility, Lord, we stand bowed before you, um, asking you to be with us, empty us of ourselves and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We know that it is a solemn commission to be in your work. It's a privilege and we don't take it for granted. We thank you for this privilege of being in your service. And we pray, Lord, that you continue to empty us of ourselves and fill us with your Holy Spirit and use us to do the work that you've called us to do in these last days. Give us understanding as we study your word this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, who remembers last time what we were talking about? A quick little review here. Um, Ezekiel, right? In the throne room of God. That's right, we were in the throne room. And today we're going to continue in the throne room of God, okay? Um, last time, the focus was primarily on um, the message was the call of repentance that Ezekiel was giving because it, in the throne room, you know, the different compartments, you know, the people of Israel had been involved in abominations, uh, lots of them. And uh, Ezekiel had a message to give that was a call, a message of repentance to give to the people. But was it an easy thing for Ezekiel to do? Was it easy for give Ezekiel to give the message? Is it easy for Jeremiah to give the message? Has it ever been easy for God's messengers to give the message? If you think about it, um, think about Moses, right? When he was called and, and God said, Moses, I want you to go and do this work for me. What was Moses' initial response to God? I can't speak. He knew, he understood that the call was actually one of great importance and he understood what it would require. And so he was not boastful about what he was asked to do. It was like, you know, I can't speak, Lord, send somebody. He really wanted God to send somebody else. Send someone else, Lord, send someone else. And, you know, and the Lord kept calling him, Lord, I've called you. And, uh, you know, we all know the story of Moses. He did do it. And it was difficult. There were times when Moses wished he had the shepherd's rods with the sheep because the sheep were actually easier to handle than the multitude of people. It was not an easy task. And Ezekiel understood this, like all men of leadership. Sometimes people think being a leader is easy. But uh, when you are true to the call that God has given to you, if you're faithful to the call, you will experience everything that Moses experienced, everything that Ezekiel experienced, everything that Jeremiah experienced, and you too will come to a point in your experience when you ask God, Lord, let's talk about what we're talking about today. God gives Ezekiel a message, even at Ezekiel chapter 1, when he takes him to the throne room and he gives him his message, also he's going to give him an assurance. And so today, last week we talked about the message. Today we're talking about the assurance that God gave to Ezekiel along with the message. So whenever you are feeling like Ezekiel and like others have felt, this is God's assurance for you as well, okay? Ezekiel chapter 1, we talked about it, the vision of the glory of God and what he saw, um, we're going to start with verse, uh, we'll start with verse 3, because we're just going to kind of read through it, because you're actually going to see some similarities as we go through uh, some of this, okay? Ezekiel chapter 1, starting with verse 3, um, and I could start later on, but I just kind of want to, and we've read through this before, but I'm just going to read through some of it again, because when you hear some of the language that's used he, the, here, it's going to sound like some language that's actually used in other parts of the Bible as well, because it's the message that kind of, kind of flows through it. Okay. And this is something I've kind of always wondered about. I've, so I'm glad that God is giving me some understanding and he's going to continue to give me more understanding, I'm sure. But this is what I understand and I will share with you today. Um, Ezekiel chapter 1, starting with verse 3. The word of the Lord came expressly. That's intentionally. Ezekiel had no doubt about it, who this word was coming from. It was coming from the Lord himself. The Lord, word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the prophet, the son of Buzi, the, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Shebar. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and fire enfolding itself. Now, remember, fire. Think about that. Now, remember these key terms that are kind of be con continue to come up as we understand this principle. Fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the mist thereof as the color of amber, and out of the mist of fire. Also out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Every one had four wings, and every one, faces rather, and every one had four wings. And their feet were straight, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of 
burnished brass. And they that had and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and their and they four had their faces and their wings, and their wings were joined one to another, and they turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and they, they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They also they four also had the face of an eagle. And Sean, I believe, was the one who brought out some of those points about the in front of the throne room in Revelation chapter 4. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it. Just, you know, they, they talked about the face of an ox, a lion, an eagle, and a man in Revelation chapter 4 before the throne. So that you see this is the same throne that is dealt with in John as well. Uh, John the Revelator talks about the same one. I think it's Revelation chapter 4. Verse uh, 7, and the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf or an ox, right? And the third beast had a face of a man, and the fourth beast was like an eagle. So this is the same thing Ezekiel and Daniel are kind of seeing, okay? And uh, verse 11, back, go back with me now to Ezekiel. He, Sean explained a little bit of detail about what those meant, I believe. Was that you, Sean, that did that in the sermon? Okay. Okay, so that was a few, few uh, a while ago, but um, I'm not going to highlight those, that part of it, okay? Now we're back at Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 11. Thus were the faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. Now when I read that this time, because, you know, I'm reading this, I'm trying to, I'm asking, Lord, what is it that you want me to communicate to your people, right? Now, what do you think about when you think of angels? They've got four wings, two touching each other, and, and the wings were touching each other, and two covering their bodies. What article in the sanctuary actually had that? Which altar? What altar? What, what was it? It was in the most holy place. What was it specifically? It wasn't, it was the what? Yeah, the cherubims, right? They had the wings and they, yeah. So I was thinking, okay, so there's obviously some connection because this is in the throne room, right, that, we're, that these are in. You know, and they're, the wings are touching, and they're, and they're like this. So something about this cherubim, actually. And what was inside the, the ark that they were on top of that was before the throne of God? God's law, right? And his, the law was in there, and eating the word of God, kind of like the manna was in there, and Adam's, uh, Aaron's rod that budded, right? So inside this ark were, were those things, and these cherubims were actually over it. That's just something to throw out there that, you know, when you're reading this kind of Remember, because he is having a vision of the throne room, because remember the bow that was talked about in Revelation was also talked about here, right? And they, verse 12, and they went every one straight forward whither the spirit was to go. Now this is the, now we're getting a little closer to what we're talking about today. And they went every one straight forward whither the spirit was to go, they went. And they turned not when they went. Okay, so wherever the spirit led them, that's where they went. These living creatures. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. And the like, and like the appearance of lamps, it went up and down among the living creatures. And the fire was a bright, and out of the fire went forth a lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like the color of a burl, and they four had one likeness. And their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. You sing a song, he's my rock, my sword, my shield, he's my wheel in the middle of the wheel. We're finding out a little bit more about this wheel within a wheel today. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for the rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the, the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. So the wheels were everywhere they went. What was by them? The wheels. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit, read that with me, for the spirit of the living creature was where? In the wheel. So this wheel that wherever they went, with the wheel was a kind of was right there. And they kind of went wherever it kind of dictated for them to go. And the spirit was in the what? Wheel. Wheels. Don't miss that point. When those went, <clears throat> verse 21. When those went, they, these went. 
And when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. In other words, whatever the, was in the wheel, the, that's what up for them to do. That's where they did. That's what they did. OK, right, you're all following me so far. OK, so we've been breaking up Ezekiel into bits and pieces each time. So this is just another piece. I'm just highlighting one part of this today. OK, OK, let's continue on. <clears throat> and the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creatures creature rather was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads and under the firmament was their uh, were their wings straight the one toward the other every one had two which covered on his side and every one had two which covered on that side their bodies and when they went I heard the noise of their wings now this is another important piece to this puzzle this verse 24 I'm trying to give you clues as we go through because we're going to look at other verses to compare this with so you get an understanding okay and when they went I heard what a noise. Don't forget this. The noise of their wings. And what did the noise sound like? Like the noise of great waters as the voice of the almighty, the voice of what? Speech as the noise of an host. When they stood, they let down their wings and there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. This is God, right? As the appearance of a sapphire stone and upon the likeness of this throne was the likeness of as the appearance of a man above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about it within it, about within it, from the appearance of his loins, even upward and from the appearance of his loins, even downward. I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, fire, noise. These are things to remember. And it had brightness round about. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so is the appearance of the brightness round about. That was also mentioned in Revelation, and we talked about that last week. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard the voice of one that spake. Okay, so here, Ezekiel is giving his call, call, and he's given something to know something about the call. And this is the, this vision of this wheel, these four, this living creature. It's hard to describe it and explain it. There's a living creature, four heads on each one. And each one had four wings, co two covering the body, two, and then two joining each other. And um, the other thing that we know is there's a noise that they made when they kind of came that, they, that you could hear. Now, God was giving him this um, vision of, as, as a symbol of his presence and the power that was to go with him as he was supposed to give his message, okay? The message that Ezekiel was to give was not an easy message. We talked about that last week. Have you ever dealt with a person in rebellion? Have you ever dealt with somebody who's rebellious? I mean, I mean, who's hardcore, stone ground, rebellious. And that's what God tells Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 2. They're a rebellious group. They are a most rebellious. They're like scorpions in verse six. And thou son of man, be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with you. It's going to hurt. Briars and thorns don't feel good. You ever go through the woods? <laughs> you get stuck. It hurts. <laughs> you don't even want to go through certain parts because you have briars over there. There are briars and thorns be with you. And thou and thou dost dwell among scorpions. That's a fiery sting, right? He was giving him an idea. This is not going to be easy. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. In other words, he's saying, you know, this is, I, I know what I'm calling to you to do is difficult. But with the call, always remember the vision that I've given you at the beginning. And that is a vision of this throne that with these living creatures and the living creature had the will and under the will was this man's hand. Now we're going to ex... <laughs> Don't forget this vision. So did what exactly was this vision? What did it mean? Uh, a little bit more of what it means, because really this is such an intricate vision that he gave him. We're only going to look at a little part of it today. OK, in chapter three, I didn't realize this as I read it the first time or the first few times. But as I continue to read over, sometimes you have to strive even when you're trying to get understanding. As I read through it again, I was like, wait, those are the same ones that are in chapter one. Let's go look at it, okay? In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse uh, 12, right? Um, starting with verse, yeah, Ezekiel chapter 3, we're going to start with verse uh, 3, 12 rather. 
Um, after God tells Ezekiel, look, I want you to go to these, the people of God, right? Not to the people of the hard language. I want you to go to the children of Israel, house of Israel. And, you know, they may listen, they may not, but I'm giving you the message to give to them. Ezekiel, um, he told them to give the message. Ezekiel was having a hard time. He was had, like Moses. Ezekiel was really struggling with this. Then in verse 12, this is God said, speaking. Then the spirit took me up. And I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing. Okay, so this is kind of like this is this great rushing from like these this, these living creatures. That's that same. Remember that sound that kind of goes with it. All right. Because I re- remember when I read it, it said, remember these words, there's a noise that goes with it. So then the spirit took me up and I heard behind me a voice of great rushing saying, blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. Remember, Ezekiel, the vision in chapter one. Remember, I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creature. So now he's, he's hearing the wings. So you know it's the same one that's in chapter one. Because he's saying expressly, I heard the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another. And the noise of what? Don't forget those wheels. It was those wheels that was, gave what? What was in this, the wheels? Because I said, read it with me. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels, right? So he said, I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touch one another and the noise of the wheels over against them. So they come with their, with their, wing, with their uh, wheels. <clears throat> and a noise of a great what? rushing a mighty rushing wind now, don't forget this because this is going to be important and if those of you who were here earlier today that should already stick in your mind the mighty rushing wind right it start you, you're getting a little picture of it and what you you're kind of you should be <laughs> right okay so here we go so the spirit lifted me up the spirit that was in the wheels was also Ezekiel was was going to be filled with that same spirit. It took me away and I went in what? Bitterness. He, it was still difficult. God had told him to do it. Give the message to these people. They're a rebellious group. It's going to be difficult. In bitterness, the spirit took him up. He goes. And in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was what? Strong upon me. So. Let's pause here. The hand of the Lord was strong upon him. God's spirit had filled Ezekiel. God's hand was upon him. And it was God's spirit that was giving the message for Ezekiel to give to the people. Remember in the lesson today, we were talking about can the axe, can the axe be boastful about what it does? That text is actually in Isaiah. Let's see. I think it's in Isaiah chapter, chapter 10, verse uh, 15. Let me tell you what Ezekiel really is and what all God's messengers really are, which really is a humbling experience. Ezekiel, cha- I mean, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 15. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 15. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaken, shaketh it, as if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up? Or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood. In other words, it's not the axe. Can an axe get excited about chopping down a tree? Okay, I have an axe, right? Let's say this is an axe, right? And I use this axe to chop down a tree. Right? Can this axe get excited? What did the axe do? And can a saw, if I use a saw and I cut uh, the wood on the table, what can the saw get excited about, right? It was just used by the hand of whose hand it was in. Ezekiel, I want you to know where the spirit is coming from that is behind you. When you are my servant, the spirit of the living God is in you to do the work that I've called you to do. And you can't boast about it, nor, not only boast, because they weren't even boasting at that point. It was not a boastful thing. It was in bitterness. Not only in not boasting, but not also in bitterness. Don't get, don't get excited, nor don't get discouraged, because I am the one that is the spirit that's in, that's doing the work. And that should give you courage to go forward and do it. You're not asked, Ezekiel, to hold up the world. What if God said, you know, I don't know your name, but what if he asked, what's your name? Shauna. What if he asked you, Shauna, look, I'm giving you a hard work to do, Shauna. I want you to hold up 
Here's the globe, the world in your hand. And I want you, Elijah, I want you to control the sun and make sure the sun comes back every day the same time and goes around and make sure. I want you to do, and I want you, uh, Sean, I want you to make sure that uh, there's rain and there's a, all these things. God said, I'm not asking you to do any of that stuff. His spirit is going to take control. But what I ask you to do, I ask you to be faithful to do it. God says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. He's in ultimate control of everything. And as his servant, you don't have to worry about those difficult things. And whether they people listen to you or don't listen to you, it's my spirit that's going forward. Go forward. Give the message. Leave the results with me. That's what he told Ezekiel. Okay, so here Ezekiel, he hear, God's given him the call, and then he says, he, he's, the Spirit lifted him up, and then he came in verse 15. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Aviv that dwelt by the river of Shebar, and I sat there, and, and I sat where they sat and remained there. How did he remain astonished among them seven days? It's still not an easy thing to do the work, right? And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, I've made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. God has to encourage him again. Give the message. It is not an easy task to do, but I am the one giving you the message. I just need to use you to give it. God could have given it to angels to give, but he has not. He's given it to people to be his, his tools that he is going to use in these days and, his, and in those days, right? Look with me, Ezekiel chapter 10. We're going to see another uh, a time when those, those uh, living creatures actually came into play. Ezekiel chapter 10. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. So here we are, the, the appearance of a likeness of a throne. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thine hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in my sight. And now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house, when the man went in and the cloud filled the inner court, then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory and the sound of the cherubim's wings. Remember those, they had a sound, a mighty rushing great sound when they would do, actually go somewhere, right? And the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court as the voice of the almighty God. When he speaketh, and it came to pass that when he had commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels, from between the cherubims, then he went in and stood beside the, the wheels. And one cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubims unto the fire that was between the cherubims, and took thereof and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen, who took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings. And remember, it's a form of a man's hand. It was really God's hand that was holding them. And when I looked, behold, the four wheels, remember those, those wheels, each living creature had a wheel. Behold, the four wheels by the cherubim, one wheel by one cherub, each one had one, and another wheel by another cherub. And the appearance of the wheels was the, as the color of a burl stone. And as for their appearance, they four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of, of a wheel, a wheel and a wheel, in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went, but to the place whither the head looked, they followed it. They turned not as they went. That's what God's people, they do. They go and they don't turn. If God says, do this, there, there's no left or right, one hand or to the other. No, no extreme on either side. Wherever God says they're doing it faithfully. And their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and the wheels were full of eyes round about. Even the wheels that, had four, four, that they four had. As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel. And every one had four faces. The first face was the face of the cherub. The second face, the face of a man. The third, the face of a lion. The fourth, the face of an eagle. And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Sheba. That's the same one he saw in chapter one. And when the cherubims went, the wheels went where? They went by them. And when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from beside them. When they stood, these stood. When they were lifted up, these lifted up themselves also. For the what? The spirit 
of the living creature was in them. Don't miss this point. The spirit of the living creature was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over above the cherubims. And the cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out, the wheels, there they are again, the wheels also were beside them. And everyone stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. This is the living creature that I saw under the God of Israel by the river of Shebar. And I knew that they were the cherubims. Everyone had four faces apiece and every one four wings and the likeness of the hand of a man was under their wings. And the likeness of their faces was the same faces which I saw by the river Shebar and their appearance and themselves they went everyone straight forward. Now, what does that have to do with us in these last days too, right? Because these wheels that were in the middle of the wheel and the cherub and the sound of the mighty rushing wind and the fire, it has a lot because it's God's spirit that is in control of his work. And when God's spirit is in his work, God is the one saying that I am the one that will make it succeed. You, Ezekiel, don't have to worry about that because so when you're dealing with rebellious people, sometimes not only you get discouraged because of the words that they say and the things that they do, but then you can feel like, Lord, this is just not working. I'm not seeing the success. <laughs> But God said, look, it's in my hands. I've got the control of the reins and it's going to work out because I am the wheel within the wheel. I am the hand that's under the wing and it's his work. He's responsible to make sure that it goes forward and it will prosper. Not like we may see it prosper. In Ezekiel's day, he didn't see them turn from their rebellion at, like that, right? In Noah's day, did he see the people repent like that? No. But sometimes you will see it. Sometimes you will not. But regardless, God says, do the work. Turn with me to Acts chapter two. The wheel within the wheel, the sound of the mighty rushing wind, the spirit that filled the, that was in them. Right. If you understand that, you understand disciples when they got filled with that spirit and they with the rushing wind. What happened? Let's turn is in Acts chapter two. This is exciting. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come and they were all in one accord in one place, there came a sound from heaven as of a what? A mighty rushing wind. This is the same sound that Ezekiel was hearing. Isn't that exciting? God's given, he gave Ezekiel the message. And if we understand it and connect the two, we got the same message. We got the same assurance because it's in a message of assurance. It's not just in a message. Okay. I'm giving the message. It's who is there with you as you give the message. That's it. That's, that's powerful. It's powerful to me. It's not last week. We talked about the message, the message of repentance, but this one is who's with you as you give it. The suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rush, as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost or the what? The Holy Spirit. As the spirit and, and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. So then they began to, as the spirit, whatever the spirit says, okay, I'm doing whatever this, letting the spirit take total control and possession of you as if you're a living creature filled with God's spirit. We're all living vessels filled with God's spirit. Zechariah says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Zechariah 4, 6. It is that same spirit that we as God's people are to have today. And the assurance that as we give the message that God is with us, he is the wheel within the middle of the wheel. Have you ever seen a, a vehicle, a car? That car out there, if I took the wheels off, where is it going? It ain't going nowhere. You could have the fastest engine. You could have whatever you want on it. But without that wheel, you're not going to go anywhere. What a symbolism Ezekiel has. I, he says God is, God is the wheel within the wheel. And as long as that wheel is going with you and, and in control of you, wherever you go, you have the assurance as you give the message that I'm with you. Amen. God is good. And that's the assurance he gave to Ezekiel. And that's the assurance he gives to us. A sound of a mighty rushing wind. So if you hear that sound of the mighty rushing wind like Ezekiel, get excited. <laughs> we all have it. 
um, and pray for it because we've got a latter rain that's supposed to go out in more power than the former rain, right? That's the assurance. And, and, and it's going to come out and it's going to give the results that God wants, how he wants. You know, there may be times where you may be, oh Lord, like even Jeremiah said from time, one time he's like, Lord, you know, I, he didn't want to give the message either. But he said, I've got it shut up in my bones. I can't stop. I got to give it. You know, may we uh, have that same assurance today that God is with us and give the message as God gives to us because God is with us and his spirit will uh, prevail. Lord, we pray to you and ask you for more of your spirit. You, you ask, what do we need? We need more of your spirit. We need the outpouring of your spirit, Lord, to give us the assurance that as we go against rebellious people, people that are like briars and thorns and scorpions, Lord, we need the assurance that you are with us, that you are in control, that you will work things out, even though it doesn't appear to us that is that is doing anything, Lord, but we know that as we go forward doing your work and you're doing exactly what you tell us to do, that everything will work together for good, even though it may not seem like it's good. Even though it may feel like it hurts, you're going to use all circumstances to work together for good and work it out for the furtherance and the upbuilding of your kingdom. When Stephen was stoned, Lord, you used that event to raise up Saul to be a mighty evangelist. So, Lord, work things out in all of our lives, Lord, for your glory as we are filled with your Holy Spirit. And please fill us with more of your spirit, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.